Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I put together my first set of cards using the December 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I created them, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you a look at the brand new sheet load of cards, December, 2023. This is a special edition in a couple of ways. We will be using 6x6 pattern paper and there won't be any pattern paper scraps left over. Using those four pieces of pattern paper and some cardstock, of course, for matting and card bases, you are going to yield eight cards if you follow the sketch, supply list, and cutting guides. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the new sheet load of cards and you would like to do that, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video where I give you all of those instructions. I have it linked in the description box below, and it will also be linked as an end card at the end of this video. And also don't forget today that my team of collaborators will be joining me in sharing their newest sets for the month. To see what the team has created for my Instagram team members, I have a link in the description box below that will pop up their shares there. For my YouTube team members, there's a couple things you can try. There is a hashtag in the title. Try that if it pops up the videos it should. Awesome, you're all ready to go. But sometimes it doesn't. So shortly after all of the videos go live, I will get everyone's added to the playlist that is linked in the description box. And guess what? That playlist is also linked at the end of this video to make it super easy for you. I do also have everybody's links, YouTube team and Instagram team, in the description box if you want to go check them out individually. You might want to also see their other videos and posts and make sure, as always, to leave them some love. And one thing I do want to point out, if you're a channel member, today you're going to see me use a special SVG for the sentiment piece. Now, if you're not a channel member or you do not have an electronic cutter, I will be showing you how to use these with a circle die and your paper trimmer. So don't worry, you're all set too. As I get into the process, I will make sure to tell you about the products and tools I'm using. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Before we get to that, I did want to stop by with a special channel member shout out. I would like to say welcome and thank you to my newest paper trimmer level member, Karen Day. I hope that you enjoy the perks of channel membership. Thanks as well to all of my members. Your monthly support keeps me creating here on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all. If you would like to find out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. This month's printable calls for four pieces of 6x6 pattern paper. On my printable, I do show two pairs of the same patterns, but today, and like you'll be able to do, I'm actually going to use two different pairs, but I thought the colors in them each went well together. From a Lumberjack Christmas, I chose this cute little Santa and then the plaid to go with it. And over on a gingerbread Christmas, I chose the little candy gingerbread houses and then a ba another background paper with different candies on it. Each of the four papers will get cut as shown on the printable and like I mentioned, this is a no scraps edition. I'm going to start with the first pattern paper and if yours does have a direction you'll want to keep that in mind. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and cut that one inch strip off the bottom first thing. 
Once that's done, the piece gets rotated and cut to five inches tall. Now, if your paper is exactly six by six, you wouldn't have this second cut, but mine did have the little hang tag from the manufacturer on it. Then that small strip at the bottom gets cut in half to three inches. And from that larger chunk at top, we're gonna cut two strips that were one inch wide, two strips that are two inches wide and make sure because this does use the entire piece of paper that you don't do what I call generous cuts. Cut it right at that dimension, if not a hair under, just so all of your pieces are uniform. I cut the second piece and the remaining pieces in the exact same way. And here's a look at all of those. And now I'm gonna move on to cardstock. Up first is CS1, which will be the mats for all of the pattern papers we just cut. You need two full sheets and a scrap. Now you don't quite need as big a scrap as I have, but it is the only one I had in this color, which is Jalapeno from Tailored Expressions. For this, you're going to cut each piece into the dimensions given on the printable. And we're actually going to start with that strip that's shown on the right that is one and a quarter inches wide. Just because if we cut the height first, then that strip at the right would not be able to be cut into the pieces that we need. Once I have that strip cut, I rotated the remaining piece of cardstock and cut it into two pieces that were five and a quarter inches tall. Now from each of these, we're going to cut two pieces that are one and a quarter inches wide and two pieces that are two and a quarter inches wide. This is a good time for me to point out that you don't need to be remembering any of these dimensions or writing them down. You can get the free printable and I tell you how in yesterday's video. Once you have your A and B mats cut, you're gonna bring back in that one and a quarter inch wide strip and rotate it and cut three pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide. And you're gonna make these same exact cuts for the second full sheet of cardstock, which I will show you on screen. But while I work on cutting those, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a little special recognition. I had some channel members who earned their one year membership badge in the month of November. So I would like to take a minute to recognize them. Their names will be scrolling up on screen now while I continue the cutting. You might have noticed after cutting both of the large pieces of cardstock that we only have six of the CS2C pieces. So from that leftover scrap, you're gonna wanna cut two more pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide by one and a quarter inches tall. Now let's talk about card bases. Some of you might already know how to do this, but in case you're newer, to get these eight card bases, you're gonna take four full sheets of cardstock that are eight and a half by 11 and cut them in half to be folded in half to yield that eight total. For mine, I'm gonna cut in half to five and a half by eight and a half, and you could go ahead and fold these over now, but in a little bit, I'll show you what I do for my card bases. Before I move on, I did want to stop by and tell you about a special series I have going on my channel this month in case you haven't yet heard of it, and that is the Crafty Advent 2023. These are daily crafty live streams from the 1st through the 24th where I will open up my three crafty advent calendar gifts for the day and craft something new with them. If you haven't yet seen the kickoff video where I kind of tell you more about the event and about an extra special giveaway, make sure to check out the description box below and I will have that linked. Also down there, I will have a link to the entire Crafty Advent 2023 playlist if you need to get caught up on anything. I'm looking forward to this and I hope that you are too. Now for the final cardstock you'll need, and that is for the image and or sentiment area. 
This calls for one piece of white cardstock and it's two and a half inch circles that you cut about three quarters of an inch off the bottom. Now, if you are a channel member, I have a special SVG that I will have up on the community tab later today and it is already on the monthly blogs. Here in front is what it looks like when you cut it out. I just put, I think, nine on this piece of cardstock just so I have an extra in case I needed it later. But don't worry if you're not a channel member or you don't have access to an electronic cutter, I'm going to show you how to make these on your own. I grabbed some nesting circles and I grabbed two that were right around the two and a half inches called for. You could always make sure that yours will fit with your sediment, but I just chose these two to show you the difference. I took those off screen and die cut them just on some white cardstock. And now I'm going to bring in my trimmer and on that larger one, I went ahead and cut off. And on the smaller one, since it's smaller, I cut just a little bit less than that off the bottom. Again, adjust this piece for your needs. Now another thing you can do if you don't have circle dies, you could definitely cut yourself rectangles. You could use a different shape die or you could just leave this off altogether and maybe go with a piece of ephemera. Use sheet load as a jumping off point to make these cards your own. Now that all the cutting is done, I brought in my mini scoreboard and the card bases that we cut. I scored each of those at four and a quarter inches and then reinforced that fold with my bone folder. I like to do this, especially with a thicker card stock, so you get a nice crisp edge on each of the cards. For this next step, I brought in the pattern paper pieces and their CS2 mats. And these are just super simple. You put together the pattern paper with its coordinating mat, and there should be an even border all around all of the edges. Now, most of this I did do off screen because it was pretty repetitive, but I did want to show you doing one full set of three. Here's a look at all of those pieces matted, and now it's time to get these put onto card bases. Per the sketch, the two pieces in the background are the same pattern, and that small piece in the front is a coordinating pattern. Now this does show you two different pattern papers, but you could definitely use three pattern papers and it would increase how many cards you yielded, but you would also need to adjust the amount of cardstock just a little bit. I went ahead and I kind of made card kits, so I got the two background pieces with the coordinating front piece together and just offset those off to the right so they'd be easy to grab to put the cards together. Now we can start assembly. I grabbed one set of the pattern papers and I place adhesive on the back of pattern paper A, which is the skinny one inch wide strip that is matted. And this is gonna go on the card front over on the left. So I did make sure it was right along the fold and I try to give an even border around the top, bottom, and left sides. Then I'm going to grab that other pattern paper, pattern paper piece B, and do the same thing, but this time it goes to the right with an even border on those outside edges. You will notice the space between the two is a little bit wider, and then I'm going to add adhesive to the back of the smaller or the final pattern paper, and this is a point where you can definitely make this card your own. If you want to move that up or down on the card, that is up to you. I did try to stick where it was on the sketch and here's a look at that first one put together. As I work on assembling a couple more, I wanted to give you some alternative ideas for this. What you could do for the background, you could have the wider piece on the left close to the fold and you could also rotate this. Just make sure you cut your pattern papers accordingly. Here's a look at all of the card fronts finished. The cards need just one more thing and that is a focal point. For mine, I will be using a sentiment and for that I got out Honey Bee Stamps Biddy Buzzwords Holiday Stamp Set. I also brought in my Mini Misty, the partial circles we cut before, and for my inks I'm using Tailored Expressions Jalapeno and Cherry Pop. 
I want to set these up so that I can do stamping as quickly as possible. So I will be having the holiday portion of the sediment over on the right and stamping that in cherry pop. And then once I have that set up, I'm going to put it in the left hand corner and set up the rest of my sediment, which says wishing you a happy and joyful. Now this one did fit right on there. It's like this sentiment was made for it. So I got that set up to stamp in green. And now that I have both sides set up, it's going to be super easy then to stamp the remaining sentiments. Hey, 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 crafty friends. It is editing Alicia here with a little update about the bonus SVG. As I was creating my cards, I thought that maybe the sentiment circle could use a border or a mat in some cases. So I went ahead and created two bonus bonus SVGs. One is a standard mat for that partial circle with just an eighth of an inch border all the way around except on the bottom. And the other one is a scalloped version with that same border. Once all of the sediments were stamped, it was time to get these cards finished. Now this is going to be a good place if you wanted to add some dimension, you could pop the sediments up with some foam tape. But for me, I decided to just go with my ATG or tape runner and keep these nice and flat for mailing. I added adhesive to the back of each partial circle and then just centered that right along the top of my pattern paper C piece. Again, you can adjust this if you would like. I finished adding these to all of the card fronts and here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the December 2023 sheet load of cards. As always, if you did, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators creations, see what they created and leave them some love. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.